Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take a look at RC circuits with direct current. And as you would imagine, an RC circuit is simply a circuit that has both a resistor and a capacitor. And some common applications of RC circuits would include timing of windshield wipers. So every time you see your windshield wipers go back and forth, back and forth, that's on a timing circuit determined by the RC circuit. And also, heart pacemakers. So every time a pacemaker tells the heart to beat, gives it a little bit of a shock, um, a little bit of a current telling the heart to beat, that is timed by an RC circuit. So in this chapter, we're going to look at charging a capacitor in an RC circuit and also discharging a capacitor in an RC circuit. And we're going to explore the influence of the time constant tau. Now, one thing that brings us back to this idea of a time constant is that in both a windshield wiper and a heart pacemaker there is a constant amount of time that is used to determine how often either the windshield wipers um, turn or the heart pacemaker fires so we're going to find that there's a very important little quantity called the time constant that helps us determine how quickly a rc circuit either charges or also discharges all right, so without further ado, let's get into drawing our first RC circuit. So in an RC circuit, we very simply have a voltage source. So we call this once again the EMF, the electromotive force. This will have a positive and a negative terminal. And we're going to connect that to a resistor and also to a capacitor. Now it doesn't matter what order we put the resistor or the capacitor. As long as all the elements are there, we're going to be okay. So the first thing that we want to do is sort of trace what happens at the moment you connect this circuit. So the capacitor starts uncharged, the resistor starts um, with no current flowing, and as soon as you connect this circuit, this capacitor begins to charge. What do I mean by that? Let's trace what an electron is going to do in this circuit. First of all, electrons will be repelled away from the negative terminal of the battery. So electrons will flow away from that negative terminal, and electrons will likewise flow toward the positive terminal. Now, when electrons flow away from the negative terminal, they're going to flow, and they're going to try to collect on this negative plate that you see over here. So a charge negative Q will be built up on the negative plate of the capacitor. Now, when all that negative charge builds up, electrons in this wire here will try to get away from all that negative charge, leaving a net positive charge on this plate, and that's going to develop a charge plus Q. Now, electrons will then flow through this resistor, and then will be attracted once again to the positive terminal of the battery. So, what we see is if we were to graph the charge on the capacitor over time. So here's Q versus T. When we first connect the circuit, there's absolutely no charge on that capacitor. So the point zero, zero has to appear on our graph. But then as soon as we connect that capacitor, charge is going to start to build up. And we're going to find that the graph looks like this. There's a rapid buildup of charge but then as the capacitor starts to become fully charged, the charge is going to level off and reach what we call a steady state. So up here where the charge levels off and reaches some maximum charge that let's call Q0, that will be essentially what we call a steady state of the capacitor circuit. Now the question is, what mathematical function does this represent? Well, with the methods of calculus, we can derive this function, Q of t, charge as a function of time, is equal to the capacitance, C, times the EMF, epsilon, times 1 minus E, which is Euler's number and the base of the natural logarithm, raised to the negative t over tau. This is the equation that we're going to be using um, in this section. 
Let's unpack this because I just threw a lot of things at you. I threw charge, I threw capacitance, I threw EMF, and this new quantity, which I'm gonna circle in red here, the time constant. So let's unpack this a little bit further. So the equation once again is Q of T equals C epsilon one E, sorry, one minus E to the negative T over tau. All right, so C is obviously the capacitance of the capacitor. Epsilon is the EMF or the voltage. Um, e is Euler's number, so 2.718. It's an irrational number like pi. And T is time in seconds. And tau is a new quantity that we call the time constant. And it also is sometimes called the characteristic time. Now what it represents, as I hope to show you on the graph in a few moments, is a measure of how quickly a an RC circuit either charges or discharges. It's a measure of how quickly an RC circuit charges or discharges. So let's focus on this equation right here and I'm going to ask us to hop over to Desmos where I've got this equation prepared and we're going to see the influence of this time constant on the graph. I also want to draw your attention to this quantity right here, the capacitance times the voltage. You might remember this equation that charge is equal to capacitance times voltage, right? So this quantity, C times epsilon, this is actually the maximum charge that we can reach on a capacitor. We're going to call this charge Q naught, all right? So let's hop over, if we can, real quick to Desmos. And in Desmos, I've got this function prepared. You can see in the upper left that I've got Q of T is equal to the charge Q times, in parentheses, 1 minus E raised to the negative T over tau. So the first thing I want to do is show you the influence of this tau. If we allow tau to get bigger, that means it's going to take longer for the capacitor to reach its steady state charge. So for example, <coughs> if I allow T to get bigger, then you see it takes longer. If I zoom out, you'll see that it takes longer for the charge to reach its steady state. The, long, the bigger tau gets, the longer it takes to reach the steady state. Whereas the smaller tau gets, you see that it very quickly reaches its steady state. So a very small tau reaches its steady state quickly, whereas a bigger tau takes longer to reach its steady state charge. Okay, what about the influence of this charge here? Well, that's the amount of charge that can be built up on the capacitor. So what influence is that gonna have on the graph? If we make that charge bigger, you might predict that as you make the charge bigger, the maximum amount of charge is going to increase in steady state versus if we reduce that leading coefficient of Q, it's gonna reduce the amount of charge that we can see in steady state. So we see the really, fascinating impact of both the time constant and the maximum charge Q naught on the graph and the function of charge as a function of time. All right, let's hop back over to our slide here and let's take a look at how do we calculate the time constant. The time constant tau, and by the way, this is pronounced T-A-U tau, the time constant is calculated as 
the product of the resistance and the capacitance. I mean, how perfect is that, right? To find the time constant, all you have to do is take R times C, the product of resistance times capacitance. All right. So if we look at the equation again, where we have Q as a function of T is equal to C epsilon times one minus E to the negative T over tau, we can start to ask ourselves some questions about what happens um, at both t equals zero. So at t equals zero, what happens to the charge? So Q of zero equals versus at t approaching infinity. What's Q of infinity? going to approach. Well, ask yourself this. If you plug in zero for time, you've got e raised to the zero power. e to the zero is one. So this quantity here becomes equal to one. Then you've got one minus one is zero. So the charge at zero equals zero, which of course is consistent with our graph. Um, at a time of zero, we've got a charge of zero. Now, what about at time approaching infinity. If you allow time to approach infinity, then you essentially have e to the negative infinity or one over e to the infinity. So if you think about this quantity approaching one over e to the infinity, that quantity is approaching zero, right? One over infinity is approaching zero. So this quantity, <coughs> excuse me, approaches <clears throat> zero. So then you've got one minus zero, which is essentially just one times that capacitance times epsilon. And that's gonna approach capacitance times epsilon, which we know is equal to the maximum charge, which we're gonna call Q naught. <coughs> okay, so now we're, we're in business. That is, the, that is literally as Q approaches infinity, or rather as T approaches infinity, we literally approach that maximum charge of Q naught, which of course we saw in the Desmos graph as well. All right, so that was a fun little um, exercise in looking at um, the effect of T equaling both zero and approaching infinity. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna look at the current. So if we go back to our diagram here, we saw that there was clearly current flowing, right? Electrons were flowing through this circuit after we closed the switch and allowed current to flow. So the question is, what is this current gonna be? Now, if you recall from the previous chapter, current is equal to the change in the charge over the change in time, right? It's the rate of change in the flow or the rate that uh, charge is flowing, right? In the language of calculus, we can call this dq dt, right? Because it's the rate of change of charge with respect to time. And because of that, we can take the derivative. If you take the derivative of q with respect to time, the derivative of this function right here with respect to time, if you differentiate that function, you will get the following. You will get epsilon over R times E to the negative T over tau. And this is the equation for the current. So let's write this nice and neat. I of T is equal to epsilon over R times e to the negative t over tau. Now, what does this equation represent? What does it actually mean in terms of the flow of current? Let's explore this a little bit further. So I of t is equal to epsilon over r, e to the negative t over tau. So let's ask ourselves this question. At t equals zero, So at t equals zero, what is i of zero? 
Well, if you look at the graph, at t equals 0, right here, this is where we have our steepest slope. And if current is the rate of change of charge with respect to time, then it's essentially the slope, the instantaneous rate of change of this graph. So this is where we should have our maximum flow of charge, our maximum rate of change, because that's where the slope is the steepest. So if we go back, we expect this to be our, our, our highest amount. So if we plug in zero for t, we essentially have e to the zero power, and e to the zero power is just one. So this comes out to be epsilon over r. This is the maximum amount of current that we can achieve in the circuit. All right, what about at t approaching infinity? So what's gonna happen as t approaches infinity? What is the current I as T approaches infinity? Well, if we plug in infinity for tau, or rather, sorry, as we plug in infinity for T, we have E to the negative infinity, essentially, or one over E to the infinity. So we have epsilon over R times E to the negative infinity, or that's supposed to be an infinity or epsilon over r times one over e to the infinity well as we just discussed this term is going to go to zero and then we've got epsilon over r times zero or simply zero so the current as t approaches infinity is zero which shouldn't surprise us because if we allow t to get very large, the rate of change or the slope of this function approaches zero. So we're not surprised at all to see that as t approaches infinity, the current drops to zero. And it drops to zero because the capacitor becomes fully charged. There, there's no longer any opportunity for charge to flow once that capacitor becomes fully charged. All right. So now we've talked about charging a capacitor. Let's take a little bit of time and talk about discharging a capacitor. So the equations will look similar, but we'll have some differences. So in this case, when we discharge a capacitor, <coughs> the charge Q of T is going to start with that initial Q naught and it's going to drop off very rapidly. And this is going to be an exponential decay function. So if you graph this function, Q with respect to T, you're going to start out with some initial charge, let's call this Q naught, and we're going to have exponential decay where we approach zero. Okay, and you can see that in the function at t equals zero, at t equals zero, e to the zero is one, so q of t is q naught times one, or q equals q naught, which we see right here in the graph. At zero time, we have the charge, maximum charge of q naught. Um, if we allow t to approach infinity, so at t approaching infinity, then we basically have e to the negative infinity or one over e to the infinity. And we talked about how e to the negative infinity is equal to zero. And so the charge at time approaching infinity goes to zero. So the charge at t equals infinity is gonna equal zero. All right, and we can see that in the graph as well, that the charge is approaching zero in this horizontal asymptote. All right, and once again, we find that the current, I of t, is going to be the derivative, the rate of change of the charge with respect to time, as before. And if we differentiate Q with respect to t, we're going to have this function 
this uh, Q naught e to the negative t over tau. We're going to differentiate that with respect to t. And we're going to get the constant Q naught coming out. And we're going to get the function e to the negative t over tau. Uh, and the chain rule factor comes out where we have negative 1 over uh, tau coming out. So then we have the negative, which is just the direction of the current, um, times q naught over tau e to the negative t over tau. And um, because tau is equal to rc, we can say that this is equal to uh, negative q naught over rc e to the negative t over tau. And you might recall that q over c is, is just the voltage. So if you, if you think back to the equation, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewrite this really quick. So the current as a function of time is equal to negative q naught over rc times e to the negative t over tau. And q over c, if you recall, q equals uh, cv, or vc, I prefer cv. Um, because q equals cv from the previous chapter, if we look at the ratio of charge to capacitance, if we divide both sides by capacitance here, we see that the ratio Q over C is just the voltage. And so this can be written as I of T is equal to the negative of the voltage over the resistance times E to the negative T over tau. And because we're calling this voltage the EMF, we can write this as I of T, oops, I of T is equal to negative epsilon over R e to the negative T over tau. So this would be the equation for the current upon discharging a capacitor. All right, and I think that with these equations, we are armed and ready to tackle some practice problems. So in the future, um, I believe you'll have an opportunity to solve some of these problems. And if you follow these equations, I think you'll find uh, a good deal of success. Good luck, and I will catch you next time.